Well, hello, beautiful people. Wayne Hackman here, a.k.a. Waxstar. It's the summer. I'm in my makeshift studio in my father's house in the United Kingdom. And, well, it's time for a new radio. For those of you who have been connected to the channel for a while, you'll know that I'm a licensed amateur radio operator in Kenya and also in the United Kingdom. And one of the things I like to do when I come back to the United Kingdom is play around on 70 centimeters and two meters. In Kenya, there's not a lot of opportunity to do that. We don't use those uh, frequencies very often because there are not many operators and the only place that it really works is in Nairobi where there is one repeater. There's one repeater for the entire country. So I live 300 kilometers away. And so any chance of me getting access to the VHF UHF repeater is incredibly limited. So when you come to the UK, you're just blessed with all of these repeaters over the United Kingdom, as well as a much better chance of getting someone on one of the calling frequencies. So I like to pick up uh, a new radio. Last year I bought the Retavis RT95 and I brought it back with me. I'm going to be using it again in the United Kingdom, but I thought I'd change my idea of handsets. A lot of us are very familiar with the Bofang UV5R. I've even done some things about the Bofang UV5R on my own channel, but I thought I'd pick up a Retavis, and this is the another Retavis. This is the RA79, and it's another handheld, which you can program using Chirp, and I'm gonna put a custom firmware on it as well. I'll talk you through the process. And it just seems to be another option that I'm gonna play around with during my time here in the United Kingdom. Let's go and have a look at the box. So this is the box of the Retavis R79. And um, it's got quite nicely packaged. It's very, very simple. And when you open it up, you get your destructions, obviously. You get the radio itself, a battery, a little charging cradle, which actually, what, what I like here is, can be connected to any old USB charger, an antenna, and a clip. Uh, let's get it all out and have a closer look. Of course, who, those of you who are used to the Bofang UV5R, this actually feels a little bit more solid and uh, a bit more substantial. The thing is with these Chinese clones is what happens is someone comes out with it, then another person clones it and clones it and clones it clones it the price becomes cheaper and cheaper and more competitive but as a result of that the quality goes down i have to for a radio that's around 30 pounds uh, this is this is feels fine and dandy for for what you want and actually one of the things i already like about it is you've already got a little pocket protector so you don't accidentally switch the radio on which i was always doing for the bofangs the radio itself operates up to five watts I don't have the ability to test that, but I'm sure you can find reviews online that will help you with that. Uh, it has an input of 5 volts up to 1 amp, uh, and then these are the frequencies it operates on 44 mega, 144 megahertz all the way up to 430 megahertz. But in a moment, I'll show you how you can put a interesting firmware on it that can actually open up a whole load of its receive range as well as its transmit range. But obviously, if you do that, you have to make sure that you are transmitting within the bounds of your license. So this is it all put together. What do we notice about the radio itself? Well, it's got this large, fantastic volume knob on the side. It actually has a backlit screen, which is quite useful. A nice large, so you can see what's doing. Push to talk here, uh, a couple of other function buttons here, which are actually programmable. And then here you have your standard headphone, headphone and microphone jack, but also you can use a programming cable directly through there as well. What's also very interesting about this radio, and it's, it's one of the appeals, particularly if you, you know, you don't want to carry your charger around with you all the time, it actually has the charging capacity of USB-C, which is great because if you have a USB-C phone, uh, all you need to do is carry one charger with you, particularly if you want to take this out with you and uh, make some contacts on some of the repeaters. It's um, not particularly heavy, but it feels pretty robustly made. Um, if you drop it, I think it will withstand one or two drops. So it's um, looking quite promising. Now, the thing is with the firmware that is on the current radio, it's okay, 
But I have been experimenting with another ready of this and I've actually found a firmware which I think is much better. However, I will just say if you put this on, I suspect it does or will invalidate its warranty, but it does open up some interesting features that you might think useful. Uh, I'll show you how to do that now. For those of you who are used to programming these radios, you can just use a standard USB uh, to the sort of headphone microphone programming cable. Now, Retivis did send me one for this particular radio, but it didn't work with my Mac. I thought it was something to do with the cable, but when I plugged it into a Windows PC, it was fine. Fortunately, I had a Bofang one, which does work perfectly with my Mac. And um, Chirp is very easy. Once you've connected it all up, you can download the radio and, uh, um, and download all of the, the settings on it. But I want to just do a, something a little bit more interesting to this is actually want to put a uh, um, custom firmware on this and I'll show you how to do that but disclaimer if you do do it I, I don't know if, if it invalidates the warranty or not but it certainly opens up some interesting features and the broadcast capability of this radio. So I'm going to put a custom firmware on this called the Exuma and I'll put the link in the description. It's a very easy way of updating your radio to a slightly more capable firmware. Again, disclaimer, you do this at your own risk, potentially invalidating your warranty and damaging the radio. Now, how do you do this? Well, the radio has a couple of ways or a couple of things that you can do to, to, um, uh, to configure it. There's a secret menu that you can do by, I don't know if I can do this, holding these two buttons down, so this, uh, the, the pitch to talk and the uh, what do you call it? The, the the next button down. When you switch the radio on, it brings you into a, a secret menu where you can configure all sorts of interesting things there. Um, you can actually even open up the transmit capabilities within that. But what I want to do is I want to put this into firmware mode. So using the same sort of technique, you hold the push to talk button down and then turn the power on. Uh, if I can do it, one uh, push to talk and then phone on and what happens is um, the, the power on and what happens is you can see that there's this light here on top which says it's ready to 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 receive new firmware so now the radio is in firmware receive mode what's great about this flasher is you can do it through the chrome web browser and you can see this website here is is put in um, I tried to flash it earlier and, and I realized the cable wasn't seated properly. So make sure the cable is seated properly. You've got it into firmware mode. And then just by click it, uh, clicking flash firmware on the website, choosing the cable that's connected to the radio, uh, Bob's your uncle. You can see it's now receiving the firmware. You can see that it's flashing. It's already up to 30% right now. And um, it's putting a new brain into that uh, Retivis to make it a little bit more like its big brother, uh, the Quashang radio. To check you've got the new firmware on board, simply switch it on and you can see the Exuma at the bottom there. And what's great about this is you can actually listen down as, uh, as low as 30 megahertz, which is fantastic. So this receive capability is really opened up. You also, with a bit of jiggery pokery, able to set this up to to transmit on wider spectrums of frequencies, depending on which region you are operating in. You can uh, uh, also, if you wanted to, open it to work up on family radio and PMR frequencies, but that's completely up to you. And I stress that that may be uh, illegal in some places in the world. So please be careful of doing that. There's one other little option that I like, I'll show you now. If you press the function key and the F button, you get a little scope on there or waterfall uh, just showing you what's going on, which you can't do on the existing Retivis firmware. And so already this radio has become a lot more capable. I do recognize that this is a very quick look at the RA79. And of course, this is new to me, only a few days old, but I'm enjoying using it already. I actually have two of these, which I'm going to use uh, around the UK, enjoying getting access to repeaters. So if there's anything strange to report, I obviously will do an update. Uh, I'm going to charge this up. I'm going to enjoy using this. And as always, thanks so much for watching. If you've enjoyed this video, please rate and subscribe. Do all of the things that YouTubers do, and I'll catch you in the next video. Bye.